Imagine we start with the numbers 0 and 1, and we take these two numbers and sum them together. For 0 plus 1 is equal to 1, and add this to the sequence. Then we take these two numbers and add them together, for 2. And then we keep going, 1 plus 2 is equal to 3. And then 2 plus 3 is equal to 5. Then 3 plus 5 is equal to 8. And so on. This sequence can be represented using the following functions, and it's known as the Fibonacci sequence. It's commonly used as an introductory problem for showing recursion and dynamic programming. In code, we will have a base case for n is less than or equal to 1. We will return n, either 0 or 1. But the magic really happens in the other branch, where the return value is going to be the sum of the two previous values in the sequence, and we retrieve these through recursion, that is, through the function calling itself. But this function has a significant performance problem. To see this, let's first visualize the function calls as a tree. Starting from the root of the tree at n, the left path is the previous value, and the right the value before it. Each side of the tree will grow until we reach leaf nodes at one of those base cases of 0 or 1. Due to the recursive nature of the function, the worst case runtime at each step of the fib function is going to be equal to the runtime of running it twice, with an input of, you know, 1 or 2 less, and a constant factor that's going to account for the less than check and the addition. This formula might look familiar. It's actually the Fibonacci function again. The bad news, however, is that this grows exponentially. Even on modern hardware, calculating the Fibonacci sequence in this way, using relatively small values for n, it's going to be infeasibly slow. Looking back at the tree, we can see why. When you inspect the descendant nodes in each of these branches, you'll see a lot of duplication. For example, n-2 appears in both the left and the right branches, but entire subtrees are also duplicated. As the value for n grows, the size of the duplicated subtrees will also grow, and you'll start to see the same duplication in more and more branches in the tree. This is the cause of the performance problems with the recursive Fibonacci solution, and dynamic programming provides us with two approaches to try to fix this. Let's first try optimizing this tree a bit. To avoid this problem, we might say that if we ever encounter a value we've seen before, we shouldn't try to explore any further, and we can just return the value that we saw before. That would look something like this. Even with a small value for n, you can see that this has greatly reduced the effort required, and it's basically entirely removed that rightmost branch. In code, this might look something like this, using a caching decorator from Python. This method is called top-down dynamic programming, and you might sometimes see it called memoization. That's memoization rather than memorization, and that's a type of caching. It's called top-down dynamic programming because we start at the root of the tree, the highest number, n and we work our way down the tree to the smaller subproblems. Without access to a caching decorator, this would be implemented manually with a hash map. If the value for n is in the hash map, then we can return that value in short circuit. Otherwise, we run the fib function as normal and store its value for next time. Imagine we now flatten out this tree from smallest to largest element. This is starting to look a bit more like the visualization of the Fibonacci sequence that we saw at the start. And we know we can calculate it in this way by adding adjacent elements together and working towards a target. This approach is called bottom-up dynamic programming, as it starts from the base cases and lower values of n, and works towards the larger subproblems and the target. You might sometimes see this approach called tabulation, as the process is a bit like filling in a table. The code looks a bit like this. You create a table, which is often an array in code, and add your base cases. You can then loop over the input values in their dependency order, and sequentially calculate the solution to the gradually increasing subproblems. The overall solution for the Fibonacci sequence is then the last value in the table. In some other problems, you may need to take a max over the table, and I've got another video giving you some pointers on how you can build the intuition around why some problems require that. An important thing to notice about this code is that there is no recursion implemented in it. There is logically recursion, but instead of recursively calling a function in code, we are referring to previous entries in the table, and computing those entries iteratively. Sometimes, in certain courses, bottom-up dynamic programming might simply be called dynamic programming, and you'll be expected to use it. In other courses, you might need to know both and be able to solve problems using either. Either way, it's good to understand the pros and cons of each approach. One of the major pros of the bottom-up approach is that it's easier to analyze the runtime. You don't need to go and solve a recurrence relation and think about the size of the subproblems. Instead, the analysis is usually reduced to counting loops and their level of nesting. 
Similarly, while the sets used with memoization have an O1 average runtime for their lookups, in the worst case there could be collisions in the set, which regresses the lookup runtime to O of n. In an algorithms class, this can be a bit of a trap, and it's avoided entirely with bottom-up dynamic programming. At the CPU level, the tight loops of the bottom-up approach perform better than recursion, as they avoid all of the overhead of recursive calls on the stack. Finally, with large values of n, the top-down approach might run into stack overflow issues if the depth of the recursion gets too large. But top-down dynamic programming has some pros too. The first is that for most people, it's generally more intuitive to think about a problem in terms of smaller subproblems, especially if you've come across recursion before. In some other problems, it's also not so easy to figure out the dependency order that you need to calculate the subproblems in. In top-down dynamic programming, this is handled automatically due to the recursive dispatch, where it calls dependencies on demand. If you already have a recursive solution, then memoization can be trivially added. As we saw earlier, it's just a single line decorator in Python. Converting to bottom-up dynamic programming on the other hand, it's not just an optimization. It's going to require rethinking the problem and probably a rewrite of the code. For certain problems, Unlike in the Fibonacci sequence, the top-down approach might be able to come to a solution by only visiting a small subset of the state space. You can see this with a knapsack problem, for example. But with the bottom-up approach, all preceding subproblems instead need to get blindly solved, irrespective of whether they're going to be needed for the end problem you're trying to solve. Note, however, that this will only affect average case runtimes, as there could be certain inputs that would require the whole state space to be visited. So the worst case runtimes generally won't improve, even for problems where this is a very effective optimization. So as you can see, there's some pros and cons to each approach, but the reliance on hash maps for the top-down approach and the impact that this has on worst case runtimes will often preclude its use in algorithm subjects. Thanks for watching my video. Hope you learned something. If you liked it, please consider liking the video and subscribing to my channel.